imagine a future, right, where humanity's survival doesn't hang on, you know, bigger bombs or faster spaceships, mm. but on the quiet, unreadable depths of the human mind itself. Mm -hmm. It's this desperate, almost unthinkable gamble. Our whole existence resting on the most unlikely heroes. This isn't just like a cool sci-fi idea. It's a really deep thought experiment about what it means to survive out there in a, well, a potentially hostile universe. Absolutely. It takes things to a whole new level. So today we're doing a deep dive into Lou Sixon's incredible novel, The Dark Forest. It's the second book in his Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy. And honestly, it's pivotal. Oh, completely. If the three-body problem set the stage, yeah. The Dark Forest just blows the doors off in terms yeah. of scale and uh, philosophical weight. Totally. So our mission today is to really unpack humanity's audacious strategy. It's chilling really against this looming alien invasion and also to grapple with the huge, sometimes pretty unsettling questions it makes us ask. Yeah, there's a lot to get into. OK, so let's quickly set the scene from the first book, The Three Body Problem. We know the Trezorans are coming. Right. Fleeing their own messed up star system. Exactly. Yeah. And they're heading straight for Earth. ETA is about 400 years. Which sounds like ages, doesn't it? It does. But here's the kicker. The Trees Lawrence didn't just, you know, set sail and wait. Mm -hmm. They sent something ahead. The Sophans. The Sophans. And these aren't just spies. They're much, much worse. They're like an ultimate intellectual blockade. That's a good way to put it. They're way beyond simple surveillance. Okay. <laughs> um, 11 dimensional supercomputers. Wow. Yeah, that can unfold down to just two dimensions. So they can cover the planet, watch everything down to the quantum level. Okay. But the truly terrifying part, they can refold and directly mess with fundamental physics. They jam particle accelerators, wreck experiments. They basically stop us from making the big scientific leaps we need for advanced weapons. So they've crippled our future before it even happens. Pretty much. It's not just a tech gap. It's like they've locked down science itself. An existential roadblock. So the main problem for humanity isn't just the 400-year claw ticking down. Uh -huh. It's this immediate total technological paralysis. We've got limited time and absolutely no way to match them technologically. Not mm -hmm. in any normal sense. Every message, every plan, every whispered idea, the soft phones can pick it up. Yeah. It really feels like checkmate before the game's even properly started. It does. So it makes you ask, right? When your enemy sees and hears everything... And they've frozen your science. How do you even fight back? What's the one place they can't see? And that right there is where humanity's desperate, maybe brilliant gamble comes in. If brute force is out and they're reading our mail, our data, almost everything, what's actually left? The mind. The human mind itself. It's ingenious, but also sounds kind of crazy simple, doesn't it? It does. But desperation breeds innovation, I guess. So the UN get this launches this top secret plan, the Wallfacer Project. Mm. The core idea is simple but the execution. Insanely complex. Trisolar and Safans, they can watch everything on Earth. Computers, conversations, data streams, you name it. But they can't read minds. Exactly. That one vulnerability, maybe you'd call it a sanctuary, that becomes our last hope. So they pick four people, make them wall facers, right. give them absolute unprecedented freedom, budgets, resources, anything. But they have to come up with their plans totally in secret known only to themselves. They basically become walking, unreadable black boxes of strategy. Just the sheer audacity of it. You right. Know, betting everything on the messy, unreadable complexity of human thought and the people they chose. It's fascinating. Tell us about them. Well, you've got Frederick Tyler, former U.S. Secretary of Defense. Yeah. Lots of strategic political background there. Okay, it makes sense. Then Renato Ramirez, a Latin American astrophysicist. Yeah. More of a, you know, abstract scientific mind. Right. Bill Hines, a tech strategist, seems logical too. But then, <laughs> then there's Leo G. Ah, uh, Leo G. Yeah, an unlikely atheistic sociologist, mm. a novelist. Yeah. A novelist deciding the fate of the world. He's definitely the odd one out. Yeah. The most reluctant choice seems totally unqualified for like military defense. It almost feels like a cosmic joke, doesn't it? Handing the keys to a novelist. It does, but maybe that's the point. Humanity's desperate, sure, but also hoping that maybe a completely different kind of thinking is needed. So Luo G, our reluctant hero, he initially just wants out. I totally rejects it. He's given all this power, all these resources, and all he wants is a quiet life. Tries to retire to a nice villa by a lake. I mean, can you imagine yeah. the world's ending and you're like, nah, I'm good. It's incredibly human, that <laughs> denial. <laughs> but uh, eventually, the reality of the Trisolaran threat starts to sink in. 
Slowly, almost grudgingly, he starts to get how serious it is. And it's him, the novelist, the least likely one. It's him. He makes the central contribution, not with a weapon, not with tech, but with an idea, a terrifying philosophical framework. The dark forest theory. The dark forest theory, yeah. Okay, so this isn't just some sci-fi plot device. It sounds like it's trying to answer that big question, the Fermi paradox. Exactly. Why is the universe so quiet? If it's teeming with life, where is everybody? So what's Luigi's answer? It's stark. Yeah. And chilling. Mm -hmm. It's basically the philosophical core of the whole book, maybe the whole trilogy. He says, the universe is a dark forest. Okay. Every civilization is a hunter hiding in the trees. Exposure means death. Whoa. The logic isn't about malice. Not really. Yeah. It's pure, cold, pragmatic self-preservation. In this cosmic forest, if you spot someone else, you have to take them out immediately. <gasps> Why? Because you don't know their intentions. Mm -hmm. And if you wait, they might take you out first. Trust is a fatal weakness. Silence and hiding are the only ways to survive. So the rule becomes... Survival first, trust never. It is deeply unsettling. It just flips our whole hopeful idea of meeting aliens, doesn't it? Completely. Forget discovery and friendship. Think cynical self-preservation. Which makes you wonder, if that's how the universe works, what chance do we have? We've already basically yelled hello into the forest by responding to Trisolaris. And that's the huge problem Luigi is wrestling with. Yeah. While he's doing that, what's everyone else up to? Right. While Lu Luigi is off you know, contemplating cosmic sociology and trying to live a quiet life. Huh. The rest of humanity is frantically building stuff, a massive space force, thousands of warships, even trying to set up colonies deep in space. All conventional stuff? Exactly. But time after time, these big plans just fail miserably. Remember that battle with the first fleet? The droplet. Oh, yeah. Devastating. <laughs> a single Trisolarum probe just wiped out almost the entire human fleet. It wasn't just a loss. It showed how useless conventional thinking was against the Sophans. They undermine everything, every strategy, every communication. And connecting that back, it just underlines the huge challenge. Yeah. The Trisolarans aren't just on their way. They're actively, intelligently countering every single move humanity makes. Mm -hmm. They even set up their own counter program, the Wall Breakers, specifically to figure out and neutralize what the wall phasers are secretly planning. Wait, wall breakers? So how do they do that if they can't read minds? Well, I can't read minds directly. But the Trisolarans are incredibly smart. They analyze patterns, behavior, past actions, public statements, resource allocation. They can deduce a lot about what someone might be thinking or planning, even if it's secret. So they're like super profilers. Kind of, yeah. And a lot of the other wall phasers fail precisely because of this. The Trizorans piece together their secret strategies through sheer observation and deduction, even without mind reading. Okay, so if your enemy seems to know your every move, even your secret ones, how do you possibly win? Right. It forces you to think about secrecy in a totally different way. And this is where Luoji, after all his seeming inactivity, finally steps up. Mm. After a lot of thinking, a lot of analysis, he comes to this profound kind of terrifying conclusion. You can't beat the Trizolarans with tech. Or war. Or even so, clever tricks. So what's left? Only one thing, he figures. Fear. Real existential fear. Fear. Okay. And that leads to his masterstroke. Yeah. His actual secret plan. Yeah. He works on developing something he calls a location beacon. Not a weapon. Not in the usual sense. It's a device designed to broadcast Trisolaris' exact location, their home coordinates, out into the universe. Using, what was it? Gravitational waves. Gravitational waves, yeah. Broadcasting it loud and clear into that cosmic dark forest he theorized about. Ah, I see where this is going. Right. He's not planning to fight them himself. He's threatening to basically ring the dinner bell for every other hunter in the dark forest. Inviting potentially countless other hidden advanced civilizations operating under that same ruthless dark forest logic to come and destroy Trisolaris. Just to be safe. It's mutually assured destruction, MAD, but taken to an insane interstellar level. Cosmic Ahmed, where the mutual part involves potentially unknown third parties. A game of cosmic chicken with whole civilizations oh, on the line. Does it work? Chillingly well. When the Trizolarans finally truly understand what Luigi is threatening, that he will expose them, that he believes in his dark force theory enough to bet both their civilizations on it, they back down. Wow. Faced with maybe getting wiped out by some unknown cosmic horror, they stop their invasion fleet, they declare peace. So Luigi becomes this reluctant hero, an accidental savior almost. Pretty much. 
But the peace they achieve, it's incredibly fragile. It's built entirely on terror, not trust. A cold detente, held together only by the threat of mutual cosmic annihilation. Which brings us right back to the core themes of The Dark Forest, why this book sticks with you. Yeah. First off, that Dark Forest theory itself, it's such a bleak but weirdly logical answer to the Fermi paradox. Hiding is survival. Being known is being a target. And that leads straight into the crisis of trust, doesn't it? Absolutely. In a Dark Forest universe, trust isn't just hard, it's dangerous. It's a liability. To trust is to expose yourself, and exposure means destruction. So it forces you to ask. Is conflict inevitable? Must civilizations destroy each other just to guarantee their own survival? Is self-preservation fundamentally at odds with cooperation when you meet the unknown other? These aren't just sci-fi ideas, are they? They make you think about our own world, yeah. our own strategies, ethics. What happens when we're pushed to the absolute edge? Yeah. Definitely. And the book weaves it all together, the politics, the science, that raw primal fear driving this desperate fight for existence. So our deep dive into the dark forest, it really shows a story packed with science, philosophy. It shows the limits of human ingenuity, maybe, but also the terrifying power of fear as a strategy and just that relentless struggle to survive against overwhelming odds. It's quite a journey. It really is. And it leaves us and maybe you listening with this stark question to mull over. If we're not alone out there, and one day we do encounter another civilization, mm. what should we do? Mm -hmm. Do we wave hello, make ourselves known, reach out with curiosity, or do we follow Luigi's logic? Do we stay silent, hidden in our little corner of the cosmic dark forest? What would you do? Think about it. Fear as the basis for peace. The ethical tightrope you walk when survival is everything.